welcome to my class. In this class, we will talk about types of networks. LAN, local area network. There are different types of networks and all these types of networks can be divided into three parts. One is on the basis of geography. Second is on the basis of topology. And the third one is on the basis of services rendered. So we can say that all networks can be divided into three types on the basis of geography, on the basis of services rendered, on the basis of topology. On the basis of geography, we have local area network LAN. We have metropolitan area network MAN. We have wide area network WAN. Virtual Private Network VPN Intranet and the last one is Extranet. All these are on the basis of geography. On the basis of services rendered, we have two types of network. One is server based networks. In the server based networks, we have communication servers, mail servers, application servers that is client server network, file and print servers. These are in server based networks. The second one is peer to peer network. In this case, we have peer to peer computers. On the basis of topology, we have first one bus topology, star topology, ring topology, mesh topology, tree topology, and the last one is hybrid topology. In this session, we will talk about only on the basis of geography. And in this case, we will talk about local area network only, LAN. What is LAN? It is a network which is confined to a single location, typically a building or a complex. Then it is termed as local area network. So a network which is confined to single location or in a particular building or a complex, then it is termed as local area network. You can see the example of local area network in this diagram. Let's take up a case. We find that there is an office building in which there are number of rooms and in every room there are few computers. These computers are in different rooms and they are connected to each other like this. It is a simple model of local area network. All these computers are in a particular building and they are connected to each other. So it's a case of local area network. Distance covered. What shall be the distance that will make a local area network? The maximum distance from one end of the network to the another end is usually determined by two things. First, the signal strength of the cable and the second one, the built-in time limit of the network system for sending or receiving message. If the cable's signal strength is very strong, then we can send the message to a distant point. If the signal strength is weak, then the message cannot be sent at a distant point. If there is a time limit in which the message has to be sent or received, in that case, that will determine the distance covered. So, distance covered is determined by these two points. Local area network features. The first feature is multiple user computers are connected with each other. Second, Computers are spread over a small geographical location. Third one, LANs use high speed medium. Medium here means cables. And generally nowadays we are using fiber optical cables. LANs use high speed medium and are mostly privately owned. Fourth point, channels are relatively error free because of low rate of data traffic. Since the data has to move within one particular office or within one particular branch or within one particular location, 
in that case that there are less chances of any error. What is the purpose of local area network? First of all, we will see a non-network computer. A non-network computer or standalone computer confines a user to its own operating system, its own software and the peripherals like printer, scanner, etc. attached to it. It means this is a standalone computer. It is not connected to any network. For operation, it has to depend on its own operating system. For functionality, it depends on its software. And for printing and scanner, it depends on these equipments attached to this printer. But if a computer is connected to a network, in that case, what happens? Let's see that. When the same computer is connected to a network, it can have access to different resources available on the network and therefore its operational capabilities can be increased manifold. Let's look at this particular thing. Here we have a server and there are three computers. Computer 1 can have access to server. Computer 3 can also have an access to server. Similarly, computer 2 can have also access to server data. In case some printer or scanner is attached to the server, then computer 1, computer 2 and computer 3 can have access to this printer and scanner through server. It means we need not have separate printer and server for each and every computer. There are three computers, but there is only one printer and scanner. The services of printer and scanner can be utilized by these three different computers through server. But it has to be network. So when the computers are network, their operational capabilities can be increased manifold. In case of multi-user operating system, this is computer one and it has got operating system of its own. Whereas there are three other computers in which there is no operating system. This computer two does not have any operating system. Similarly, this computer three does not have any operating system. Computer 4 also does not have any operating system. It means computer number 2, 3 and 4 cannot operate. Now, in this case, if these computer 2, 3, 4 are connected to computer 1, then the operating system of computer 1 can assist in operating computer 2, 3 and 4. Look at in this case, computer 2, 3, 4 does not have any operating system, but the operating system of computer 1 assists in running these three other computers. This is possible only when these are networked. Now, if computers are connected to each other, in other words, they are networked, then they can have access to data from the database server. In this case, data can be accessed by these three computers. Computer 2 makes a request to server to supply some information. Then the computer 1, which is a server, it provides the desired information to the computer 2, computer 3 and computer 4. It's a case of access data from the database server, but this is again possible only when there is a network. Now, what are the elements which makes a local area network? In other words, what are the parts? What are the components by which a local area network is made of? Remember that a network consists of wide types of hardware and software components that assist in network to operate. Some of the hardware element are, are the hardware components of LAN R. First one, clients. Second, servers. Third, network interface card, NIC. And the fourth one is communication channel, that is medium. These are wires. Let us talk about all these points one by one. The first one is clients. 
here we can see that server is providing information to number of computers. We have here four client computer and one server. This makes a good network. The client can make a request to the server to provide some data or information. Now client, those computers which are attached to a LAN and share the resources and processing power of server attached to a LAN, they are termed as clients. So all those computers which are connected to the server and they make a request to the server to provide some data or information, they are termed as clients. Server. Server is a computer that provides access to its data, that provides access to its software, and that provides access to other hardware component like scanner and printer that are shared on LAN to other computers. The computer which shares its resources with other computer is termed as server. In simple word, server is a computer which allows access to its data resources and its hardware resources. Then that computer is server. Note, there can be more than one server attached to a LAN. We will see to that. Second, each server attached to a LAN has a unique name and all the users connected to a LAN identify the server by its unique name. So every server has a unique name and the client computer identify the server by its unique name. In this particular case, we are having two servers, server one and server two. We have got four client computers. Now all these client computers can make a request to server to provide some data or information. Similarly, if the request goes to server one, then the server one has to provide the data or information. But if the request goes to server two, in that case, the server two will provide information to the client computers. Now, all servers can be divided into two categories. The first category is of dedicated server. And the second category is of non-dedicated server. So we have two types of server, dedicated server and non-dedicated server. Dedicated server. Dedicated server is a computer on a network that is exclusively used to provide services to other client computers and is not used itself as a client computer. So that server which does not seek any services from other computers, rather it only provides services to other computer is termed as dedicated server. A computer which is dedicated to serve other computers is termed as dedicated server. Non-dedicated server. It is a computer on a network that is not exclusively used to provide services to other computers. Rather than it provides and seeks services from other computers attached on the network. In simple words, it is a server as well as client at the same time. So at some time it provides services to other computers, but at the same time it can receive services from other computers. It provides some services to other computers and also avails services from other computers on the network. Then this computer is termed as non-dedicated server. Note, server can also be defined according to the function performed by them. We can have a printer server, file server, mail server, application server. All are defined in the forthcoming videos. The third one component is network interface card, NIC. Network interface card is also known as network interface unit, net card, or LAN card. All these names are one and the same thing. We can call it LAN card, we can call it network interface card, or we can call it NIU and so on. This is the picture of network interface card. Network interface card is a device which is attached to all client computers and the server attached on the network. So any computer which is connected on the network, 
we will find that there is a network interface card attached to every computer. It allows a computer to establish connection with the network. It means if we want to form a computer network, then on every computer there has to have a network interface card. Each network interface card attached to any computer has a unique identifying number and that is termed as node address. In simple words, node address means the address of the NIC that is attached to the computer. And the last component of local area network is communication channel. Communication channel or medium in simple terms means we are talking about how computers are connected to each other. What is the medium? What is the way used to connect these computers? It means we are talking about wires. In a LAN, the term communication channel refers to connecting cables. That is the cables required to form the LAN. We need to interconnect different computers and these computers are connected with the help of cables. These cables are termed as communication channel or communication medium. Remember that communication channel may also be in the form of wireless connections. It means computers with certain devices can be connected to each other, but we will not be using any wires. This will be wireless local area network. Here we are forming LAN without the use of wires. These LANs are termed as wireless LANs. Thank you very much.